All right, today we're going to be reacting to some videos put up by CNBC talking about Tesla and what's recently been going on. The stock has been going up, so obviously all the analysts are going to be talking about it and all of the price targets are going to be going up because the, the stock price went up. So let's check this out. Let's bring in Dan Ives, of course, of Wedbush Securities, a frequent guest for that seat right there. Good Love old the Dan Ives. Pants. Thank you. Um, sorry, we <laughs> can't get those wave. fully on camera. But let's start off with what you've been talking about. You've been very bullish on Tesla. You've been right, Dan. What do you make of the deliveries? I think this was really, it was a jaw dropper relative to many expecting softness. I think th those price cuts, that was the poker move that they really needed to make to put an iron fence around their install base. China, I think that's really ultimately the catalyst. Wow, look and at this that. for the bulls, mm -hmm. I think this is really an inflection point. It feels like right now they're just getting stronger. And in terms of electric vehicles, it's Tesla's world. Everyone else paying rent. <laughs> is but, they have know, one liners. The Mike and Phil both made is we're still really at 1.8 million for the year, which is where we started. Estimates for the company have actually come down. So hold on, hold on. 1.8 million for the year. <laughs> That's how much. Okay, so that's how much Tesla said they're going to deliver 1.8 million. And now all the analysts are like, yes, 1.8 million. That's the number that they said. So that's all we're going off of. Okay. Now I'm just a guy sitting at home watching YouTube videos. And in Q1, they delivered over 4,000, uh, 400,022 vehicles in Q1. 400,022 vehicles. In Q2, they delivered 400,079. 479,000 vehicles in Q2. So if you total that up alone, okay, Q1 and Q2, that's over 902,000 vehicles, all right, in two quarters. So 900,000 in two quarters. So if you say that Austin and uh, Berlin <laughs> stay exactly the same, even though we all know that they're ramping up production, right, they're going to be, numbers are going to be higher, just like they showed in Q1 and 2, the numbers went up because they're ramping two factories, all right? So just say that they continue at 900,000 for two quarters, so two more quarters, that's 1.8 million. So <laughs> doing the simple math of, okay, they delivered 900,000 in two quarters, in the next two quarters, they're going to deliver 900,000, but they're ramping two factories, and it's evident in Q1 and Q2, they're making more cars. So like these analysts, man, they just go off what Tesla said. They don't do any research. They don't look into it at all. And I'm just, I'm not an analyst. I'm just a guy sitting here just doing, <laughs> doing the numbers and, and knowing that Austin and Texas are ramping, which is like, everyone knows that. Like it's not hidden. It's not a secret. And they showed evident in the numbers right here. If Even if you're just a numbers guy and you look at Q1 and Q2, you see that number going up. So obviously they're going to sell more than 1.8 million cars. Oh, man, it's very frustrating. And this guy, he knows better too, but I don't know. All right, let's continue. Has this actually been the reason the stock has added or the company's added $400 billion in market cap? And if not, what then? And is it justified? Yeah, and obviously great points that they make. But I think what this has really been, it's about the AWS moment, the supercharger. That That's really what changed everything. In terms yeah. of, I think investors now are starting to realize the sum of the parts of this story is starting to get realized. And even though the next quarter or two, margins will trough out in terms of, you know, I think ultimately expand the Q4 in, in next year. But the supercharger, batteries, and of course, AI. I think right now, not given credit from an AI perspective, which is why now you can maybe start to rationalize, is this a trillion and a half or higher? As this all plays out in terms of the Tesla story. Well, I mean, I guess we should mention it did trade at 1.2 trillion once. It went from 1.2 to 400 billion. So it lost 800 billion. It's regained half of it, essentially, over the last yep. couple of years. That's true. But again, true. I, I keep... It was at like around 400. And now, yeah, it came down, but now it's going back up. Um yeah, it's going up. I don't know if it's because of the superchargers or not. Everyone's switching to the Tesla standard because that's not really much. You know, if you look at the numbers and stuff, it doesn't really it doesn't really move the needle in terms of like um, how much revenue they're going to make. Uh, it's it's good for like the, the world. Right. It's good for everyone to, to be on the same standard. It's way better. 
Um, it's more efficient. It's less likely to break. Um, it doesn't really benefit Tesla that much um, in terms of profit and what they're going to make from it. Uh, so I guess if you're, if you don't know much about Tesla and then, and you don't look at the numbers, you kind of, you might think, Oh, that's everyone switching to Tesla, like the Tesla chargers, like the stock should go up. They're going to run everything. But if you look at how much money they make from that, it's not much unless they start, they put solar on each and every, um, charging station and they produce their own electricity, then it might be something. Um, but it's not a big deal. But I guess it looks like a big deal from the outside. So maybe that's why there's been a huge run lately. But um, I'm in this for the long haul. Like I have, I've been buying Tesla shares since 2018. I buy it basically every month. Um, it's kind of like, it's automatic. I just buy more every month. So I'm in it for like 10 years. So um, all this little up and down doesn't really matter to me. But it's interesting to see what makes it go up and what makes it drop. Coming back to this idea, it's, if it is this huge open-ended, you know, AI play, they're going to be the, the, the mobility utility for the world, and it's a software company, great. Why should I care about $10,000 upside for units in a quarter? If that's the context, then why are we trading 6% higher on the, a roughly as expected number? And you say bears should be going to hibernation. I don't think they are. Bernstein here, uh, $150 price target. We struggle to justify the rally in fundamental terms. The, cheap, the clearest sentiment catalysts have been market perception of Tesla as an AI company, as well as Tesla's charging standard becoming the de facto standard in North America. Neither appear financially material to Tesla. Well, for the bears, I mean, they hate it at 20 billion, 50 billion, 100 billion, and, and where it is today. They're, they're always going to have that view. My view is this is just a transformational growth company. They obviously went through issues in terms of the price war, but now that ultimately that whole they're playing chess, others are playing checkers, it's paid off. Margins are troughing, and investors now are starting to realize that dream scenario as they get through to 2 million units to three, Cybertruck comes out way of this year, and then that's some of the parts. That's why right now this is just another flex the muscles moment for the bulls, but the bears, they'll continue to yell fire in a crowded theater. But in, in, to Mike's point, <laughs> when does that actually trickle down to the fundamentals? Because if you use kind of that AWS example, you know, perhaps when you can really monetize the supercharger, the AI and all of that, you can keep those prices low and keep volume churning. Is that ultimately kind of what your calculus is? And, and if so, when do they get there? And it's a great question. I think the other thing is that from a battle. Yeah, yeah. These analysts and stuff um, on Wall Street are always asking when. They want it now. They want it next quarter. They want it this quarter. Like, they just want it now. They're not really thinking about the long term. Like, a lot of us that are investors in Tesla are thinking, like, 5, 10 year plus, you know, like, I'm looking at 2030 beyond and, and even like 2035, 2040, like I'm not going to take any of it out. Um, I make, you know, pretty good money to to not have to. So um, we're looking at it for long, the long term. By 2030, they're going to have the they're going to have their uh, robo taxis on the streets. They're going to be everywhere. So we know it's going to go up. So we're just holding. We're still buying. And this is cheap. This is going to be cheap. When you look back in, at, in 2030 and, and look back on 2023 and you see these, pri these prices, um, these are going to be cheap compared to what they're going to be in seven years. So, um, yeah, all these guys just want this quarter. When is it going to happen? We want it now. When is, when is the full self-driving going to happen? But we're in it for the long haul. We know it's eventually going to happen. We're just holding. We're buying. We're holding, waiting. We know what's going to happen later on. Battery perspective, they now could potentially lower costs over the coming years, 30 to 50 percent. You start to factor that through. That's where ultimately, then there's the drum roll to a sub thirty thousand dollar vehicle. That's where demand really starts to expand. And yeah. this green tidal wave, this five trillion dollar green <laughs> there tidal it wave is. that we call that's playing out. It's green not just zero wave. sum game. GM, Ford, others, Rivian, three one three area code is going to be successful doing it. Biggest transformation to the auto industry since 1950s. But this was the quarter the Bears were saying, this is it. They're going to miss the quarter. Mar and ultimately, they go into you know July 4th with fireworks, as I believe this was an inflection quarter. Let's oh, play. shoot. Hold on. Okay, so he just said something interesting there. GM and Ford and Rivian and others are going to be successful in it. 
I don't know about that, Dan. Um, <laughs> I don't know about GM. Ford has a chance. Okay, Ford has shown that they're willing to um, change. They know it's going to be very difficult. They've been very vocal about it. Um, their president guy have been, what's his name, uh, has been very vocal about it. He's talked to Elon. He knows the struggles. But Mary Barra is, uh, she led, and it matters. <laughs> so they canceled the the Bolt. Um, they got their, what is it, Altium battery <laughs> technology that's, like, already outdated and inefficient. Uh, they got their EV Hummer that they sold two in the first quarter. So GM is not going to make it. <laughs> I think GM is not going to make it. Um, Rivian might have a chance. They make a good product, but, um, it has had its issues. Um, and can they produce it at a higher volume and can, can they make them at profit? So that's the big question. Uh, GM, I don't think GM's going to make it. Ford has a chance, but that's the weird thing about Dan. Like he, he kind of knows what he's talking about, but then he says something like that, which kind of throws it all out. Like, how do you, how do you think that, um, GM will make it. Like that's not. Maybe he has to say that. Maybe he's just I don't know being um, political. I don't know. He's not not trying to anger any of the um, big auto companies. So he's he's kind of being optimistic on that part. But yeah, GM. I don't think they're gonna make it. But that was the first video of many guys. So please remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out Patreon. That's where I post exclusive reactions to Tesla news over there. So um, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'm out of here. Peace.